we have some yet to be identified cases. The Cleburne County Jane Doe, 1990. This Jane Doe was found in a wooded area by a pulp worker in Heflin, Alabama, in February of 1990, near Evans Bridge Road, which is near a logging area. She likely had brown hair and was around 5'2 to 5'4. They believe she was aged 19 to 39, which means her loved ones are looking for a woman born from 1951 to 1971. She had a lower removable orthodontic retainer. She likely weighed around 100 to 120. If anyone has any idea who she might be, please call the number on your screen. Baltimore Jane Doe, March 5, 1996. She was likely a young black woman around 17 to 19 and 5 foot 1 to 5 foot 4. It's hard to say when she was born. It's possible she passed away the year she was discovered, but there is a lot of back and forth as to whether or not this is true. It means her family could be looking for someone born around 1977 to 1979. However, had she been there longer, it could be more, 72 maybe to 1974. It's important to take estimates with a grain of salt. It's possible she had been there a lot longer than they realize. She had a few medical differences that may help identify her. One was a small bone anomaly on the right side of her skull that could be from surgery, hereditary, or by accident. The other was that she had a sacralization of her fifth lumbar vertebrae, meaning it was fused at the bottom of her spine. This is a pretty common issue. There weren't any clues as to what happened, and there was no obvious trauma to be found but it's believed it wasn't natural and was a result of foul play. She was wearing an imitation leather bomber jacket and a white blouse in a size 910. Her jeans were a size smaller. Her ankle boots were a size 6. She had pierced ears and gold loops. The Baltimore Jane Doe 1996 has gone unidentified for 26 years. The Baltimore Jane Doe, 1987. This is yet another case of somebody dumping off a Jane Doe. This time she was found in an alley in Baltimore in 1987. She was likely 24 to 30 at the time. That would mean her family's looking for someone born in 1957 to 1963. She weighed around 110 to 140 pounds and was around 5 foot 3. In this case, she was topless when she was dumped off, and they didn't even dump her at a hospital. They dropped her off in that alley where she was found, and somebody else transported her to the hospital. Sometimes I genuinely hate people. Who knows? Maybe she could have been saved. There's no note as to how long they think she was in that alley. It's believed she overdosed, but one can imagine why her shirt was removed, although there was no other signs of any other type of assault noted. Carl Koppelman is a bit of a legend in the John and Jane Doe cases. He's done so many of the reconstructions, and he's not paid anything for this. He truly cares, and he makes an effort to help identify people. I'm not sure where or how Mr. Koppelman was approached, but I believe it was likely on Facebook where he's very active in posting about John and Jane Doe's. A man reportedly approached Mr. Koppelman to tell him he believes the unidentified woman is Rhonda Jones, his sister. Rhonda Jones had a tattoo of a turtle. The location of the tattoo in this case was on one of her buttocks. Yet, for some reason, it doesn't appear she's pending identification. So I'm not sure if they're making any effort to confirm if she is or isn't Rhonda Jones. If a case is in the process of identification, and they're pretty sure usually that nameless listing disappears. But in this case, the nameless listing is still there. I do, however, see on the Doe Network that there is no DNA taken. I almost didn't list this because it sounds like they have a great lead. But her son and her sister deserve to know if this is Rhonda. The number for the police is on the screen. The Baltimore Jane Doe, 1987, has gone unidentified for 34 years. The Baltimore Jane Doe, 1979. 
Before we dig into the specifics of this case, I should say something I haven't stated lately. If you are missing a family member, you should contact the NamUs website. The National Missing and Unidentified Person System is the very first place along with CODIS that John and Jane Doe's are sent through for identification. It's the best way to have a loved one be identified. Non-direct relatives can help by uploading their DNA to GEDmatch and Family Tree DNA, both of which are free. But it's NamUs that direct relatives should go to initially. It's free. I cannot stress too fully how important this is if you're looking for somebody. Now, this young woman was found in Fort Smallwood Park on December 6, 1979, on the edge of a pond, 15 feet off Cabana Road. She had passed away a few days before she was found. The cause of death was never released. She was believed to be between 13 and 17, which means her family is missing a loved one born from 1962 to 1966. She is likely of mixed ethnicity. She had darker skin, brown hair, and blue eyes. This young woman had a number of health issues that might help identify her. She was only 4 foot 6 inches tall and 89 pounds. She appeared to have abnormal physical development, though it's not clear if it was through mistreatment, malnutrition, or genetic. She had short limbs and slightly bowed forearms, as well as small, broad feet. She had two upper teeth that were missing prior to her death. If anyone has any information on this case, please call the number on your screen. The 1979 Baltimore Jane Doe has gone unidentified for 42 years. Although I covered a number of Baltimore Jane Doe's in this group, I need to say that I only scratched the surface. If you are from this area and missing someone, there are still more than I've covered, sadly. Jane Doe, 1999. On November 3rd, 1999, some people were out hunting mushrooms along Highway 26 near Astoria, Oregon, when they found the partial skull of a woman who had been exposed to the elements for about a year. This was around milepost 29 on McGregor Road. Scavenging animals had attacked many of the remains. She likely had a slim build and a jaw deformity, which might help with identification. She was wearing Levi jeans, and her belt buckle had a peace symbol on it. She was most likely of Asian or Native American heritage. They estimate she was 16 to 30 and had been there for about a year. If this is correct, that means she went missing in 1998. The forensic odontologist thought dental x-rays suggested she was 16 to 21, but the forensic anthropologist suggested 16 to 30. She would most likely have been born in the years 1977 to 1982, but a wider estimate could be 1968 to 1982. It is not known for sure, but it appears she gave birth at least once, so there may be a child out there trying to find her. It's also important to remember that while she was found near Astoria, Oregon, she was off the highway, and that means she could have been transported to this area from anywhere. In fact, many Jane Doe's were purposely transported along the highway. A false location is often just a misdirection. She was likely around 5 foot 2 inches tall and 110 pounds. Please call the number on your screen if you think you may recognize her. The Clatsop County Jane Doe has gone unidentified for 22 years. Thank you everybody for watching and listening. If you could help to get the channel noticed by the YouTube algorithm by liking and leaving a comment, even if you can just leave a thumbs up or some emoji, it counts as engagement. It would be so appreciated. And don't forget to subscribe if you haven't yet. Thanks everyone. Take care of yourselves and each other.